Niners with Jimmy B. And joining us now as we get to talk some NFC West football is Eric Williams, beat writer for NFL on Fox. He joins us now on the right Twitter guest side. How are we making out today, Eric? What's going on? Not a whole lot. I'm stuck here in traffic coming back from Rams practice in Los Angeles. What's new, yeah, huh? really. <laughs> is it that bad? Is it really that bad? I mean, is the five just at any time of the day just packed? No, it's like that, like 24 hours a day, it, it feels like. And it's that bad and worse. Having come from Seattle, which also has uh, bad traffic, it, it doesn't yep. compare at all to L.A. Uh, all right. Let, well, let's talk about Seattle a little bit because the 49ers – are trying to be the first team to win the NFC West three straight years. And Seattle was the last was the last to do it in two thousand four to two thousand seven. So is this there is 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 this the 49ers division to not lose? I mean, it seems like everybody's got a pick to win. I think so. When you look at the roster, I think one through fifty three, they definitely have the most talent. You know, in terms of the NFC West, but. When you look at what's happened this off season, you know they've been dealing with a lot of adversity. Obviously, they have the hold in with Brandon Ayuk. We're waiting for that to be resolved. Trent Williams also is holding out. Those are two of their best players on offense. Um, Christian McCaffrey's dealing with a calf injury. He hasn't been able to practice. That first round pick, Ricky Pearsall, is dealing with a shoulder injury. He hasn't really been able to to get out there. Um, Juwan Jennings also is dealing with a groin injury. So you have several injury key players along with the holdouts and the contract stuff that needs to get resolved. And I think whenever you have that kind of stuff, you know, buzzing around your team, um, it, it could start to, to affect team chemistry. And so I'm interested to see how they come out these first couple of weeks. And Eric, talking about that a little bit, and obviously Trent Williams, I think he's got to be the priority first and foremost for, for yes. Brock Purdy's backside. W- what seems to be the holdup? With Brandon Ayuk, who's now a holdout, getting charged about forty-five grand a day. There's several teams very interested in him. I understand Cleveland has stepped up again for a bigger number. I understand the Patriots have offered a bigger number than the than the 49ers. Yeah. I don't know where the Steelers' number is. Is this ball in whose court is this ball in right now? You know, there's there's a there's a lot of confusion because of all the different reporting that's going on around this this contract dispute and so it's hard to know to be honest um i think it, it kind of falls with Ayuk in terms of his decision making and having clarity on where he wants to be whether it's you know in san francisco or it's somewhere else where he probably could make more money i think ideally if you're Ayuk, you want to make the most money in san francisco because he knows he could put up the best numbers with purdy in that offense but sometimes we don't get what we want. So he has to choose. Is it, does he want more money or does he want to play for a team that, you know, could potentially win a Super Bowl? And so we're all waiting for him to, to, to come to some decision. I think the, the Niners are at the point where, Hey, we need to, we need to get ready for a game, you know? And so they'd like him to make that decision sooner rather than later. If you, if you look back to last year, I believe both that didn't sign until Thursday before their first mm-hmm. game against the Steelers, uh, was able to get in there and, and still play. So they do have, you know, a couple more days before things get, you know, seriously urgent in terms of, you know, I use missing games. Do you, do you feel the CD lamb newest comp uh, was the main reason why I walked out no. of camp going, okay, <laughs> there you go. Uh, where not, are we at? He's not making, he's not making CD lamb money. Well, I know that. I yeah. think he wants to make what Amon St. Ross make, which is about 30. Okay. He, I can't imagine him thinking that he's going to make $34 million a year. I, I would be surprised if that was a holdup. Well, it's just interesting how he – that's when he left, would not show up, is, you know, a couple of days after the CeeDee Lamb situation. From what you can tell, just real quick, is there any angst in that locker room because of one uh, Brandon Ayuk? Are they, are they happy he's finally holding out versus being around? You know, and, and being around players in this situation – they usually don't get involved with it too much from, from my experience. I know I was covering the charges when Melvin Gordon was holding out. And I know a lot of guys were talking to Melvin during that time, trying to get him to sign the contract because they really felt like that was going to be the best deal for him. And that, you know, it was kind of impacting uh, what was going to happen in terms of their season. But I think, you know, players typically say, Hey, I don't want to mess with a person's money. That's, 
their financial situation is, is their business. Um, but you have a good point. I mean, this is a team that's, um, you know, expected to compete for a Super Bowl, and they obviously know that Ayuk's going to help them do that. He's around the team too, so that's kind of a, a different element. Usually when you're holding out, you're, you're not at the facility. So I imagine there's conversations going on. I mean, Debo said that they, they talk on a daily basis, and Debo went through this as well. Uh, in terms of his contract, you know, a couple years ago. Um, but I think at the, the, the bottom line is IU needs to make a decision on where he wants to be and what the financial package is. And I don't think he can kind of hold the Niners and really the, the, the team hostage, you know, by, by waiting for him to make this decision. Eric Williams is our guest on the Right Toyota guest line. So let me follow up then. For me, and I want to ask this question of you, the most important guy that they get done is Trent Williams at left tackle. I could live without Ayuk. I can't live without yep. Trent Williams. Totally agree with you there. I mean, Purdy needs to be protected, uh, not only in terms of him just ability to make plays down the field and feel comfortable in the pocket, but also running the football. You know, he's one of their best run blockers. And so if you're able to run it and run play action off of that, that's going to help the offense be more efficient. Um, I expect Trent's going to be out there. I just think they need to sweeten the contract a little bit, maybe give him a little bit more guaranteed money based on what others are making at his position. I think right now, because of new contracts that were signed in the offseason, he's like the fifth highest paid left tackle in the league. I think he still probably is the best left tackle in, in the league, even though he's 36 years old. So right now he's, he's due to make, I think, $21 million. Um, you know, give him a couple more million dollars guaranteed uh, to make him happy. Um, makes sense to me. Probably makes sense if you're if you're Brock Purdy because you definitely want him playing left tackle instead of the alternative. Eric, let's talk about Seattle. Uh, Pete Carroll out after 14 seasons. What is mm -hmm. the uh, the vibe in Seattle? The people you're talking to on the expectations of this Seahawks team for this season. Yeah, I had a chance to watch Seattle in preseason when they came down and played the Chargers and, and talked to a couple sources that I know within the organization. Um, they're excited. Um, you know, felt like there was a, a change needed. Felt like kind of on offense and defense that they had got stale. I know one of the things that, uh, you know, when, when Pete first came in, um, he kind of created some innovative ways of, you know, playing that Seattle cover three, playing the rangy long cornerbacks and, and, and more rangier linebackers that were built like basketball players, uh, did some different things on offense. So they kind of felt like they were ahead of the curve in terms of scheme on offense and defense and things just kind of got stale over time. And with the addition of Mike McDonald, they're kind of back to being more innovative defensively based on what he was able to do with the Ravens and then adding Ryan Grubb on offense same thing you kind of have some more innovative ways to attack defenses again based on what he did at the university of washington we'll see if that that translates uh you know in the nfl game but there's a lot of excitement there uh, they think that the roster is, is pretty talented and and they can hit the ground running and we'll see you know if you look at the arizona cardinals uh, they cut desmond ritter they bring him back you put him on the practice squad are you surprised mm -hmm. to a point that the Cardinals, as of yet, have not signed, gone out and signed an experienced veteran quarterback. Brett Rippon just recently signed with the Minnesota Vikings. I know Tannehill's yeah. out there. There's a few other guys yeah. out there. Um, from what you can gather, and then even, you know, Jonathan Gannon talking about the dust hasn't settled maybe by Monday it will. How surprised are you the Cardinals would actually go into a season with Three. Clayton Tune as their backup quarterback? You know, a little surprised, but, I mean, he was a draft pick. Um, and then they also traded for Desmond, so they gave up some draft capital for those guys to be in their room. You know, another thing that teams like to do is, is to wait till after the season starts, and if you bring in a veteran, then you can you can pay him week by week instead of, instead of having you know that full salary guaranteed for the season. So maybe they wait, you know, and, and kind of see how things play out. Look at you know Joe Flacco, 39 years old, got off his couch to go. <laughs> join the Browns and ends up leading them to the postseason and win comeback player of the year. So they certainly have other options at their disposal and they don't necessarily need to make uh, a move. Now they certainly can make a, a move later in the season. That might be a little more cost effective. 
how come nobody is talking about the Rams? Uh, because I find them to be extremely <laughs> interesting, Eric. You just left their training camp. How come nobody's yeah. talking about them? Two? I think they're going to be a tough out. Hey, Sean McVay wants to keep it that way, so he, he's he's happy that nobody's talking about them. I agree. Um, just watching them on the field today, they get Puka Nakua back, who had a little bit of a knee issue. He looks like um, you know, he did last year. And I think the, the key guy for them is Cooper Cup looks like his old self. Good. You know, he looks like he's fully healthy and moving like the person that, you know, was the Super Bowl MVP and Triple Crown winner three years ago. So you have their two main receivers there. Uh, they're pretty good at running back with Kyron Williams, and they drafted uh, Blake Corm. But I think really the key for them is going to be defense. You know, obviously Aaron Donald's not there, but uh, they like what – Kobe Turner gave them last year, and he's going to move from nose to three tech. He was voted as a captain this year, so he's going to be in more of a leadership position. And then they're really happy with the two rookies One. they got, Braden Fisk and Jared Burst. feel like they can really heat up the pass rush with those three guys, along with Byron Young, who I don't think people are talking enough about. He had nine sacks last year as a rookie. They're pretty good up front, and if they can control things up front, create havoc with their pass rush, I think it kind of protects an older secondary they have in the back end. Um, and and it's a good compliment for what they want to do on offense. So I agree. I, I think they should be right in the mix there. And that would be my team I would pinpoint as a team that could overtake the Niners this year. Eric, real quick, last one uh, with Jim Harbaugh in, in L.A. now. Uh, is he getting back page or is Sean McVay still the back page, so to speak? No. Jim's getting a lot of run, man. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you drive down the freeway. I just saw a billboard of, of Jim, you know, with his, his whistle and his, his Jordan cleats, you know, um, <laughs> out there for all of L.A. to see. So, I mean, he, he has a, a, a presence, and, and that's one of the reasons that the Chargers made the move and gave him $15, $20 million a year to, to, to really kind of be the face of this franchise in Los Angeles to get some eyeballs on – on their organization, not only to get eyeballs, but to, to win some games as well. Harbaugh's won wherever he's been. Um, he knows how to, 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 to put a competent offense, defense, and just kind of a culture, building the culture, which is what the Chargers needed. The ownership can kind of just put him in there, you know, get out of the way and let him uh, go to work, and certainly that's what he's done since he's been here. Hey, jump in that HOV lane. There's no cops around. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I hope you're on Bluetooth, too. hope yeah. you're on Bluetooth, big fella. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Eric, as always, man. Appreciate your time. I, I appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Follow him on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Eric Williams, Eric underscore D underscore Williams at NFL on Fox. He was brought to you today by All City Towing. Join the team at the largest towing company in the state. That's All City Towing. They are hiring all across the board. They have great benefits, a healthy 401k employer match. They have employer paid life insurance and so much more. Check it out for yourself. Just go to allcitytowing.com.